For the past two years of United Republican government in Washington, many newscasts, including this one, would begin with the latest from the president, who has a lot of power, or his GOP allies who ran Congress. Well, that all changes tonight. That all changes right now. Because the most impactful news about the future of this shutdown of the federal government comes tonight from a Democrat, an incoming speaker holding a lot of cards and outlining a plan to try to reopen the government tomorrow. Tomorrow we will bring to the floor legislation which will open up government. It will be based on actions taken by the Republican Senate. We have given the Republicans a chance to take yes for an answer. They are now feeling the heat. It is not helping the president. It is not helping the Republicans to be the owners of this shutdown. We're asking the president to open up government. We are giving him a Republican path to do that. Why would he not do it? Why? Democrats also telling the White House to stop holding things like food stamps and assistance for farmers hostage. Meanwhile, at a meeting today, Trump got a little bit vague about a negotiation strategy. How long do you think the government is going to stay partially shut down? Could be a long time, or it could be quickly. Could be a long time. Is there a number below $5 billion that you might be willing to accept in order to reopen the government and get this uh, thing going right. forward? Well, I'd rather not say it. How long are you willing to keep the government shut down then in order to get it? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. Now, the Democrats will attempt to pa pass the stopgap spending bill by tomorrow evening, funding most of the government through September. Then what their plan would do is separate the Department of Homeland Security, which oversees the border, and only fund that for a few weeks. The strategy there would be to reopen the government while admitting that there is more negotiation to be done between the party, at least potentially, on border issues and politically to stick Republicans for the shutdown if they won't even do that. Now this, you may have noticed, is vintage Pelosi. It's tough, it's crisp, and it seems to be outlining consequences. Now while Donald Trump has made a lot of noise about a lot of people that he doesn't get along with, including just tonight Mitt Romney, there are some signs here we want to show you that he seems to now realize the incoming speaker has real power and he's got to deal with her. Notice how Trump's tune has recently changed when dealing with Pelosi or talking about her from the Oval Office to interviews on Fox News. In all, I'm not holding Nancy to this, but she said you'll never get the Republicans to vote for it. I mean, you should not have a Trump shutdown. Uh, you have the, oh, the oh, White House Trump, Trump shutdown. Trump. Oh. You have the White House. You have the Senate. You stayed in, in Washington, D.C. through Christmas, through New Year's. We've seen Nancy Pelosi in Hawaii. Democrats not willing to come back. We have to have border security, and a wall is part of border security. That the president choose to shut down the government, that we have a Trump shutdown as a Christmas present. It is early in this new chapter, but as you see there, Donald Trump doing something that's rare, skipping the opportunity from a force-fed Fox News question to hit back at someone, while Pelosi has seemed to take a page sometimes from Trump's own playbook, The Art of the Deal. Remember that in that book that he co-authored, he wrote, bullies may act tough, but they're really closet cowards. The only people bullies push around are the ones they know they can beat. Confront a bully, and in most cases, he'll fold like a deck of cards. We'll get into the Pelosi strategy, and later tonight, I have a special report on why this entire shutdown is Donald Trump breaking his promise on the wall. But we begin with an all-star political panel to kick off the year. Former Congresswoman Donna Edwards, former chairman of the RNC, Michael Steele, Democratic strategist Julian Epstein, and here in New York with me, Mark Thompson, host of Sirius XM's Make It Plain show. Uh, Donna, you, you look at the layout here. You look at incoming Speaker Pelosi, who you know well, uh, what, what is the key to Democrats moving the ball if Donald Trump continues to speak vague like he did today that this could go on forever? Well, my has the landscape changed, and by noon tomorrow with uh, Speaker Pelosi at the helm, I think that what we're going to see is Democrats saying we're willing to put on the table a way, a pathway to open up the government, and Republicans, you can take your deal or not. And I think the president is going to get the uh, full swath of um, the importance, the import of Nancy Pelosi's leadership. And she is going to have a united Democratic Party uh, standing behind her. And on that point, uh, the unity seems clear, Julian. Listen to Pelosi saying, look, they may negotiate on certain things, but wall funding is not one of them. 
Yeah. Are you willing to come up and give him some of this money for the wall? Because no. apparently that's the sticking no. point. No, nothing for the wall. We're talking about border security. Nothing the for the wall, but that means it's well, a But we can go starter. through this all, uh, back and forth. No. <laughs> How many more times can we say no? Nothing for the wall. Julian? Yeah, well, you know, the clip that you played, with, particularly with Pelosi and Schumer and the Oval Office, it, was look, it looked like two adults toying with a Ritalin-deprived teenager. Um, you know, there's, there, there's kind of a, there's a new sheriff in town, and the new sheriff is a lot smarter than the old sheriff. And, you know, they are, they are clearly winning the war here. They're winning the blame game on the shutdown. They're winning the public argument about the wall. Um, you know, if you look at what Clinton experienced in 1998 when he was facing an independent counsel, the Democrats stuck with him. But you're seeing Republicans starting to cave. You're seeing the national security wing of the Republican Party, Mattis and, uh, and Kelly, uh, heading for the hills. You're seeing the traditional Republicans like Romney coming out and saying the president is debasing the presidency. You're seeing, unlike 1998, you're seeing a lot of cracks in the walls. These cracks have been there for a while, but they're getting worse. And they mean something now, now that you have for the first time, perhaps, in Trump's professional life, he really has to deal with an opposition who is going to confront him, hold him accountable, and really is a lot smarter than he is. And, and you're seeing it because, you know, this, this thing about serving up to Trump a Republican pass, the Senate passed Republican alternative, and letting him say no to that, I mean, they're just toying with him at this part. And, and they're, you know, they're, they're getting the better of him, and they're, 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 they're shrinking, you know, his 40 percent support that he has. It, it, it will probably change shrink as a result of this. So they're, they're just toying with the president right now, and they're, they're going to win this fight. Michael, you're not in a competition with Julian, but he did compare the president uh, to a baby who needs a toy, to a riddle and adult teenager, to some good. sort of lower <laughs> IQ individual. A riddle and deprived <laughs> adolescent. And, and uh, that's his view. You're, you used to run the Republican Party, although you've been independent uh, about many things you disagree with this president on. What is your analysis of Donald Trump, who, if, all, if nothing else fails, has always claimed that he knows the deal part. He may not know the bureaucratic right. policy part. He may not know the notice and comment rulemaking under the Administrative Procedures Act. He may not understand why it takes a long time to, to withdraw troops from Syria. So he sends mixed signals. And now, finally tonight, we're learning he's backing off that. But he said he knew the deal part. Does this look like a guy who's close to getting a good deal? Uh, this is a guy who uh, has no idea what the deal is. He doesn't know what a good deal is in front of him, which was presented to him when the Congress passed the very same legislation that the House is going to pass tomorrow uh, and, and was prepared to send to him for him to sign off of. The Senate was behind it. The deal was done. And then, of course, Rush Limbaugh and others said, no, you don't want this deal. So that's his, that's his reality. His reality is that part of the base that he's still holding on to because he needs to, to feed them and they need to feed him. That's how symbiotic that's become to the detriment of all else. Uh, Mattis leaving, uh, no, no deal uh, to, to open the government. So that's let where me, the president is, is Let me push is right you on now. that. And I appreciate you introducing the concept of symbiosis this early in the hour. I try. <laughs> it takes time to get into these things. It uh, does. You are saying something that I hear a lot in your town, Washington, that this is for the base. But, you know, before Donald Trump, I don't remember uh, conservative members of the Republican Party clamoring for things that would take extra tax dollars or things that they used to say should be paid for by another country. Now they should be paid for by Americans. Uh, is that really what the large center of the Republican base wants? Or is there some sort of a zombie Trump mind meld where they go, oh, I, I know Mexico is supposed to pay for it, but I guess it's a good thing he's going to force us to pay for it? Well, they're not looking at it in that context because the president was just, what, 10 days ago saying Mexico is going to pay for the wall. He's still repeating the same mantra. They're still believing and buying this idea that that's going to happen. And look, we've gone from a wall to slats. You know, mm. and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the president to come out and announce he's actually going to go with aluminum siding. So mm. this is this is how this thing is going to move. And in every step along the way, Ari, that base will be with him, which is why what Mitt Romney said, and I know you'll probably talk about it a little bit later, was so profoundly important in terms of creating a breaking point from this sort of mind trap that a lot of Republicans, especially in the Senate, uh, seem to find themselves. Mm. Mm. I take your points there, uh, Mark Thompson. Is this any way to govern? No, it's not governing at all. And there's one school of thought on Donald Trump's side, the extreme conservative side, that doesn't want government to function anyway. 
they love to sabotage it in every way that they could. So it's like a bonus. It's right, not working great. Right, right. Yeah. And, and there's, there's always been a history of that uh, going back to the Civil War. But, you know, it, what also is happening, you know, Netflix at this hour is, is saying to people, discouraging people from taking what is called the bird box challenge that is walking around trying to function with a blindfold on. Mm. It's too late for Donald Trump's base. They already have blindfolds on. He said Mexico would pay, Mexico's not paying it. How can you be in denial about that if you elected someone to drain the swamp? He's saying that part of the wall is being built. There is no part of the wall being built. There are no slats. Uh, Michael said aluminum siding. I, I think pretty soon we'll be at aluminum foil. But the base is blindfolded <laughs> and is willing to go along with this, anything to sabotage. Nancy Pelosi is winning. Now, we all know how bright she is. Donna's correct. And she's serious. You don't go up against Nancy Pelosi. But she barely has to do anything. Mm. She literally can just stand still doing what she did today and say she yeah. is putting on the table tomorrow the same bills that Republicans already passed. The person who's really on the hot seat, I think, is Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. He has to make a decision about what he's gonna lead his Senate Republicans to do. And I'm sure there's a lot of discussion now about, about what that is, because 2020 isn't the greatest map for Republicans. They've gotta decide right here and now whether they're gonna jettison Trump or you know ride off in the sunset with him. One other thing, too. He's probably gonna try to keep this up through the weekend. You know, Mueller time is every Friday. So, you know, anything that will blunt any new information, and, and you just gave a tease about a second story tonight, any information or anything else that comes out, he can use this to continue to distract his base and keep that blindfold on. Right, and that's a shell game. Uh, Julian, having worked in Congress, you can speak to the fact that in the beginning, uh, the shutdowns do not have huge scalable consequences, partly because the federal government is is built to run in extenuating circumstances. But the longer it goes, the more serious it gets. We've been covering this, we're gonna to continue to do it so, so the public understands. Uh, people who are trying to get food shortages dealt with are, are gonna start running out of that this week. Farmers by next week are gonna lose disaster assistance. That affects a lot of people who already got hit by a federally deemed natural disaster. Then take the immigration court, something, Julian, that uh, folks say, is, is what Donald Trump wants to improve. The shutdowns, quote, paralyze the nation's immigration courts, allowing several hundred undocumented workers to dodge, guess what, deportation orders. Every day this continues, according to some great reporting in the Washington Post. Uh, walk us through that context, Julian. So shutdowns generally have a party that gets blamed for it. Uh, and the short-term pain is bearable. The long-term pain is unbearable. Trump has already claimed responsibility for this, so we're kind of past that. And, and, and his big, the biggest problem Trump has is he's not making an argument that people support. People don't support the wall generally. The public doesn't support the wall. But it, it, the, his bigger problem is the wall is kind of an empty totem, a, a kind of a symbol. Uh, he himself not only said he was going to get Mexico to pay for the wall, he famously told the Mexican president that he doesn't really care about the wall. And in truth, the wall is going to do very, very little about illegal immigration. If you were serious about illegal immigration, you would deal with uh, visa overstays, which make up more than half of undocumented. Mm -hmm. uh, you would deal with employer sanctions, which is what keeps undocumented here. You would treat Mexico as an ally, not as an enemy in this game, because most of the, most of the people crossing the southern border are coming from Central America. America, Mexico has in fact sent back over 100,000 undocumented crossing into Central America, crossing uh, into Mexico to try to make it to the U.S. Most of the most of the undocumented are not coming, are not Mexicans. Mexico could in fact be an, an ally. So anybody serious about immigration, and we should be serious about illegal immigration, sees this as nothing more right. than a simple. The public doesn't support it, and with 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 him having to bear the blame for this, and Republicans, you know, I mentioned. The, the, the retirements, I mentioned Romney, I mentioned other Republicans that are showing a, a great deal of discomfort with the fact that they are being uh, associated with a, a losing argument here. At some point, they're going to crack, and it's right. just hard for me to see how Trump comes out ahead. And this is just a preview of a lot more to come with the Democrats controlling the House right now. Donna, briefly, your view on those points. Well, I mean, I think Julian is right, and you're going to actually begin to see the uh, the downsides of a, a shutdown, and it's going to become evident. I think on the on January 12th, checks need to be cut to uh, those 800,000 federal workers who will then not have a paycheck to pay mortgages and to go to the dry cleaners, all of those sort of thing, consumer things. You're already seeing the national parks 
and all those western states that are really impacted the businesses around them will be too and so the, the you know the, trump will begin to hear that effect and i think that's going to have um, a, a really important effect on uh, on senators and this is not sustainable right. trump shutdown will end and it will end because they have to come up with it, with a deal that was the senate uh, senate deal and get that through the through the house and the senate and onto the president's well, desk all- he'll sign it he'll sign it well, and all, eyes will, all eyes will be on the building behind you and what he does, your prediction there. Congresswoman Donna Edwards, Michael Steele, Julian Epstein, Mark Thompson, thanks to each of you. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.